<clears throat> Don here in Florida and today I want to point something out. When I take this drill chuck and I insert it into the tailstock of my Monarch lathe here, I can turn it slightly but then it locks up. The reason being is that this tang has a slot that it sits into inside the internal taper of this. So when you insert it in, if it does start to twist a little bit, it'll lock in to that slot, okay? This is the adapter for my mill. It's a R8 to MT2. It is well when you insert the chuck in, it goes in, at a certain point it locks in right there, and it will not turn, it's locked. And this is really handy because sometimes if these tapers come just a little bit loose, it'll cause the entire chuck to spin or even it fall out for that matter. So that's no fun. Over on the Atlas lathe, I don't have this luxury. The Craftsman Atlas being a, a lower end machine, they didn't bother to put that slot in there. So even though you have that tang on there, when you're inserted in, this chuck can just freely spin around in there. Now, a month or so back, I created this tailstock torque bar, which is really good, and it keeps this entire unit from twisting. And where this really saves is on the pin right here that keeps this internal taper from twisting back and forth. Literally, that pin is being saved from total destruction when I get uh, crazy on this machine. But I don't always want to hook this up. I don't always want to set this up on here um, unless I'm doing really, really heavy cuts. And in most cases, if I'm doing really heavy cuts, I'm going to go over on the Monarch anyway. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take and modify this so that we can go ahead and put things like our chuck and our, our threading tool on here and not have to worry about it slipping around in there. So this tailstock, when you have the tool inserted, you have to crank it all the way back and it uses the end of the screw here to knock it out. So we have to be real careful how we set this up. So let's go over there, let's take this out, go over there on the bench and see what we can do. Okay, so here's the internal taper taken out and looking it over, it's really not in too bad a condition. This is the threaded hole that the uh, handles turns in and out and brings it in and out like this. And so this goes up through here and it pushes on the back of this to cause it to pop out. So my idea is this, why don't we create an interference inside here on each side and we can use some grub screws one on each side and use those so that when this goes in it creates a slot so that tang can sit into it and we'll keep it from turning just like it does on the Monarch. I think this will be fairly easy to do the one thing we have to be careful with is this though this screw has a diameter of, let me, I wrote it down here, 0.475. And the diameter of this at the very bottom is 0.595. So if we re take the remainder of that and divide it by two, the amount that the grub screw can turn in here, we've only got 60 thousandths that we can play with on each side. So I think that'll actually work because all we actually have to do is create an interference fit in there and even on the Monarch it does turn just a little bit before it locks in so I'm sure it's set up similar on that as well so let's go ahead and take this and modify it I think we can uh, be safe by finding the correct depth on here by marking it out Let's do two of these so we know that we're the same on each one. And I'm sure it is because it's an MT2. Okay, so from here to here, 
we want to be right up on that tang so let's get it all the way back to here let's get in the middle of that tang because we know we're going to drill in the middle is uh 2.521 and the same for this 2.521 so it would be safe to assume that measuring from the front here to that point would be where we want that uh hole drilled so let's line that up yeah 2.521 let's lock that in and come around here and we'll we'll put this in the mill and get a little bit more accurate i'm just going to make a mark on here for now and we'll go with that okay here we are all set up on the mill the groove right here that that pin rides in when it's in the tailstock actually creates a nice flat spot to make sure that this is square in here and then I used a couple of V blocks to hold it all tight in here. We're going to use a mill just to make a slight flat spot right there before we start drilling just to ensure we have no wandering because I'm sure this is probably pretty hard so let's go ahead and start. I, I got this centered with the DRO, so, okay. Okay, so here we go. I cleaned it up a little bit on the scotch bright. I uh, deburred all the holes and stuff, so now it's good to go. I took these grub screws and I went ahead and turned the heads down a little bit uh, just to make sure that they uh, wouldn't protrude out from the side here. And I wanted to use grub screws like this because notice that they have a, an angle at the head. So when they're protruding through there, if, if it went square through there and this turned it would come into basically a sharp point by using grub screws you have that taper on there and it should come onto a flat point like this so that'll keep the tang from getting torn up and we're going to put a little loctite on here not too much i don't want to get too crazy and insert this And we need to have it come through here uh, 60,000. So I, I'm going to look through there and I'm just going to kind of gauge it as I do this. That looks just about right, right there. And we'll insert this. And yep, it locks right against there, locks right up. The big question though is, uh, is it gonna miss the screw? So let's go ahead and take it on over there and uh, put it in and see what happens. Okay, so let's uh, check this out. Uh, notice that the uh, numbers are much more visible now that I've cleaned this up. 
and okay it goes right down past the screw so I'm happy about that and when we push this in okay when we turn it we can lock it like that now if we really want to make sure it's seated down in there we can tap it like that and there we go we have it locked in and let's see if she'll come out bam yes it will just like that so pretty pleased with that setup I think it's gonna work just fine I wish I had something to, to try it out on that I would guarantee that it would try to slip on but I don't have anything like that at the moment so uh, I guess that's about it all right well that was a nice simple little upgrade to my Atlas I, I think she'll turn on par with my Monarch now <laughs> but uh, really I mean that's probably something that would add a few more dollars to a, a lower-end lathe and that's why they're not done but uh, upgrading it yourself, I mean, it only took me a few minutes, so you might want to consider that if you have an issue with your tools slipping in there. So I'm uh, really pleased I did that because I, I do end up with a lot of stuff uh, starting to slip, especially sometimes when I'm, I'm drilling or something and I pull back and it, it unseats it slightly and then it just wants to slip in there and you know, you know how that is. So anyway, I'm glad I did it. And uh, I guess that's about it. As always, from Florida, Dawn out.